late 1940s, members of a tiny religious sect are campaigning door to door for converts in Quebec, the most Catholic province in Canada. The missionaries will be denounced, beaten by mobs, and jailed by the hundreds. They zealously spread the word of God. They make enemies of a man whose word is law in Quebec. This religious war will destroy one man's life, provoke censure from the highest court in the land, and will define every Canadian's right to religious freedom and free speech. You were in a very Catholic time. Et la religion, à l'époque, autant chez les protestants que chez les catholiques, est excessivement importante. C'est quelque chose de très, très euh, fragile, je dirais, lorsqu'on touche à ces questions-là dans les années 5, 40 et 50. Alors, il faut bien comprendre que ce n'est pas le contexte d'aujourd'hui. La religion n'a pas la valeur aujourd'hui qu'elle avait à cette époque-là. Dans une province où 85% de la population est catholique, la Church a guidé la politique publique sur la santé, l'éducation, les sociales et les morales issues but it is now slowly losing power to the provincial government under newly elected Quebec Premier Maurice Duplessis. When Duplessis said that the bishops eat in his hands, I think it was a caricature, maybe, but it was a caricature of what was happening at the time. So the political power of the bishops was dependent on the power of the bishops. A devoutly religious man, Maurice Duplessis declares he heads the only Catholic government in North America. Religious minorities accept the balance of power in Quebec and stay within their own institutions and houses of worship. All except one group that has only 450 members in the province, the Witnesses of Jehovah. They will challenge the way Duplessis runs the province. They prepare a crusade in Quebec in the spring of 1945. Les témoins de Jéhovah ont décidé de faire une campagne en 1945 au Québec, euh, un endroit où ils avaient peu d'adeptes. C'est une secte qui a pris euh, son emprise davantage dans l'ouest du Canada. Les témoins de Jéhovah avaient eu de la difficulté aux États-Unis, ont eu de la difficulté en Ontario. Et effectivement, en arrivant au Québec et, et en s'attaquant directement à l'Église catholique. Jéhovah's Witnesses say the one true God, Jehovah, is one spiritual body that Satan influenced the Catholic concept of the Holy Trinity. The witnesses believe only their interpretation of the Bible leads to salvation. And like the early apostles, they go to where people live to spread their word. So, they have different methods. They go to the houses, they do the solicitation, they go to respond to their message a little bit. It's not usual. La façon de procéder dans les religions au Canada, c'est généralement les, les fidèles qui vont à l'église et non l'église qui va vers les fidèles jusqu'à un certain point. You would have a territory and you wouldn't you would work just the streets on that territory and somebody else would have another territory and they work they would work that street and we would uh, go to the door and and we would say, Bonjour, madame, je travaille en collaboration avec les témoins de Jéhovah. Savez-vous que tout le monde sont maintenant dans l'incertitude, ils s'amènent de l'avenir menaçant? John Howe's frequent partner is Laurier Saumur. Le travail de maison en maison, c'était pour localiser ces personnes-là qui s'intéresseraient euh, au message que la Bible donne. On utilisait la Bible de l'abbé Crampon, qui était une Bible catholique, parce que la plupart des gens croyaient qu'on avait une Bible spéciale. To most people, Jehovah's Witnesses are a nuisance. For the Catholic Church, they are a nemesis to be eradicated. From their pulpits, priests denounce them as heretics. They are shunned by Quebec society. Oh, c'était un peu difficile. Les gens, on nous a traqué comme des bêtes de somme. C'était vraiment difficile. 
Le clergé avait une peur morbide de, des témoins de Jéhovah parce qu'ils avaient peur de perdre le contrôle. J'ai eu des problèmes euh, moi-même. Euh, le clergé, par exemple, les, les prêtres, un prêtre est arrivé vers moi avec une, avec une foule de garçons, euh, de badauds, là, qu'on appelle en français, et qui sont venus, puis il m'a même donné un coup de poing dans l'estomac. The harassment extends into classrooms. Therese Boucher is just learning what it means to be a Jehovah's Witness in Duplessis, Quebec. J'ai été refusée à l'école parce que je ne voulais pas faire le signe de quoi. Ça fait que c'est là que je me suis rendu compte, moi de plus, qu'on était différents. Puis les, euh, on faisait rire de nous autres aussi. Jehovah's Witnesses are undeterred. They step up their campaign distribute pamphlets, conduct more meetings, and begin preaching over loudspeakers. Formal complaints begin reaching Quebec's Attorney General, who also happens to be Premier Maurice Duplessis. Étant donné que Maurice Duplessis, qui est procureur général du Québec, qui est responsable, donc, de l'ordre public, va se sentir obligé ou euh, de, de sentir le besoin d'intervenir afin de calmer la population. Probablement, la suite de pression est tellement que des membres du clergé, autant catholiques que protestants, ont pu faire à son égard pour qu'il intervienne, pour mettre fin à, aux activités ou à tout le moins euh, tempérer l'activité des témoins de Jéhovah. Duplessis déclare Jéhovah's Witnesses ennemis de la Québec société, disant qu'ils sont agents du communisme. Beaucoup croient qu'il Quand on allait à la station, on allait faire nos, notre épicerie, là, où, euh... On se faisait trop toutes sortes de noms. Les communistes, dans ce temps-là, ils nous appelaient communistes. Of course, we had nothing to do with communism, but that didn't stop the Plessy. He made his words to the Plessy meant whatever he wanted them to mean. The Plessy threatens Jehovah's Witnesses with a law originally meant to curb communism. The padlock law authorizes the state to raid and lock up any building used by enemies of the state. Anybody that uh, disagreed with the Plessy on anything was automatically labeled a communist. So uh, they threatened on a number of occasions to use the padlock law to close up any uh, halls that Jehovah's Witnesses were using, but they never actually padlocked any of them on our account. Duplessis also orders police to monitor witness activity closely. Officers throughout Quebec now arrest Jehovah's Witnesses for bylaw infractions, disturbing the peace, soliciting, and circulating pamphlets without a permit. John Howe was arrested 13 times during the campaign. We used to go uh, in, in East Montreal, you know, you go up sometimes three flights of stairs to an apartment, and uh, we would look down, we saw a police car, we'd try to engage the lady in a and conversation to stay in there as long as we could till they went away and then we'd come back. Glenn Howe, John's brother, is a young lawyer involved in the cause. My brother was involved in it. I was concerned, of course, but I was also concerned about many of the other young folks that I knew at the time who were being abused, young women held in prison with prostitutes and so on. It was a It was a rough time. Bien, nous amener au poste de police. Alors, euh, il nous amenait, puis il nous amenait dans les chambres, puis il nous battait. After an arrest, Sumua and others turned to fellow Jehovah's Witness Frank Roncarelli to post bail. Frank Roncarelli était un restaurateur montréalais qui était plutôt prospère. Son restaurant de rue Crescent avait une clientèle assez aisée et depuis de nombreuses années. Donc, il avait des revenus disponibles pour payer les, les cautionnements des témoins de Jéhovah d'une part. Et il avait également des installations avec son restaurant pour, pour organiser la distribution de dépliants de témoins de Jéhovah. My father uh, was a prosperous gentleman. Uh, he owned apartment buildings. His mother, um, he inherited the restaurant from his mother. 
uh, and he got into the restaurant business from his engineering profession, but he had a prosperous lifestyle. He owned property. Frank was a very intelligent man, and he was very spiritual, believe it or not, for a man of uh, his caliber and, and his uh, economic position. He was very, very spiritual. He believed what he was doing was right. This was his religious belief. What he was doing was right, and he believed that was it, and what he, you know, and you have freedom. In this country, under the British North America Act, the separation of church and state, I can practice. I'm not hurting anybody. Maurice Duplessis' heavy-handedness evokes painful memories for Frank Roncarelli. Back in Italy, he had fled the political strong-arm tactics of dictator Benito Mussolini. But in Quebec, Roncarelli decides to fight. He keeps posting bail as Jehovah's Witness arrests pile up. And if this is what, God willing, as he would say, this is what uh, Jehovah directs, uh, this is what I'll do. And that was his attitude. Frank Roncarelli's defiance has made him a high-profile target. The Duplessis government is about to make him pay for it. September 7th, 1945. Chateau Gay, a small community south of Montreal, becomes a battleground in the conflict between the Duplessis government and Jehovah's Witnesses. A mob of a thousand people converge on a Jehovah's Witness meeting and start throwing rocks and tomatoes. C'est le, le clergé, une organisation religieuse, là, qui ont pourvu les tomates dans, le, dans un camion, puis les, les gens nous ont <rire> envoyé des tomates sur nous. Alors, ce qui est arrivé, nous, on, on, et éventuellement, on a pris la route pour s'en aller, mais là, il y a des gens qui ont sauté sur moi, ils ont sauté sur d'autres, et ils ont frappé. Il y en a un qui m'a... The mob gangs up on Saumur. He is badly beaten and spends several days recovering. Mais c'est ce qui est arrivé là, pas rien que moi. Il y, a, il y a des gens, plusieurs personnes qui ont été maltraitées là, bousculées, euh, houspillées, si vous voulez. Euh, ils, ont, ils ont tout fait ça. A week later, 1,500 protesters show up at the Jehovah's Witnesses' next meeting in Chateau Gay. I just remember the mob, and uh, there was a few of us there. Frank Roncarelli was there. I was sent back to the car, waiting for my father, and my brother and father uh, were there, and the mob formed, led by the priest and the policeman, and the provincial policeman, as the picture shows. It could have turned into something that could have been menacing, because maybe the police would have stepped in at that point. At that point, they were not really doing it. They were walking in front of the crowd. They weren't holding it back. My brother was hit in the face and the eye with a tomato, and luckily, some person drove through the crowd, and my father and brother jumped on the running board, which they had on those car on that car, and the car drove them over to where our car was, and we got in the car and drove away. Police respond to the Chateau Gay riot by throwing more Jehovah's Witnesses in jail. Each court appearance is fraught with tension. A case of Jehovah's Witnesses, you'd see everybody scared and worried, and uh, the police were there. They'd have a mob of policemen around, like we were going to drop bombs or something. But this is what they'd been told. Frank Roncarelli is kept busy posting bail at the Montreal courthouse. 390 times between 1945 and 1946. You see, the police were fed up with these, all these uh, arrests and cases of Jehovah's Witnesses. They, they knew that we weren't hurting anybody and that there was no good reason for it. And so they got tired of processing all these cases. They used to phone him up and say, Frank, the jails are full. Come down and bail him out. He'd go down and sign. It was all property bail. No money changed hands. City authorities strike a deal with Roncarelli to speed up the process. 